always been known for making their cars quirky and different and out of the box. Kind of did something even crazy for their standards back a couple decades before they shut down. So the Saab 9000 was Saab's bigger of their two cars. Back then they had the 900, which was probably the most iconic and best-selling Saab of all time. And then they had their 9000, which was the bigger version. So I guess one day Saab just decided, you know what, we don't include enough of our airplane engineering into our cars. So they decided, we're gonna make a special edition Saab 9000 and we're gonna call it the Prometheus. And we're gonna get rid of the steering wheel and instead of having a steering wheel, we're gonna give you a joystick down in the middle to steer it with. Why Saab did this? I don't really know. I only really have two good reasons or possible reasons for why Saab would have done this and possibly thought it would have been even close to a good idea for a production car. The first being safety. When you get into an accident, usually your head tends to slam forward and lo and behold, slam straight into the steering wheel. So having this big, really hard circular thing for your face to smash into isn't really ideal for safety. So I think part of the reason why Saab decided it would be a good idea to get rid of the steering wheel in a car is for safety. So instead of having this big, ugly, stiff steering wheel for you to slam your face into, you'd have a nice flat dash area, which of course would also have a big, huge airbag somewhere to your steering wheel. So in theory, I suppose that could work, and I'll talk more about that a little bit later, sort of the ergonomics of using something like a joystick to steer a car versus a steering wheel. The second reason why I think Saab thought that this might have been a good idea is maybe just for publicity or for marketing. I mean, like I said, the 900 was a fairly popular car for them when the 900 was in its prime, was when Saab was really the only time it was a profitable or worthwhile company to invest in. And I think they figured, you know, we're having some success with the 900, but our 9000 isn't selling very well. So maybe if we do something crazy and we draw a bunch more attention to it, it'll help sell better. Obviously, you know, it didn't really do much, but it's still, the, the, the Prometheus still stands out there as probably one of the crazier ideas for a standard prototype car out there. I mean, of course, you have your crazy looking prototypes that Saab had done in the past, like the 906 Turbo or the Aero X in more recent years. But this, for on the outside, being a standard, normal looking Saab 9000, a normal looking sedan for that time period, this was quite crazy what they did on the interior. So this car was actually featured very, very briefly in Jeremy Clarkson's tribute or Top Gear's tribute to Saab when they finally went out of business back in uh, 2011. Checkered history, bonkers advertising, and lots and lots of harebrained ideas. In 1992, they even made a car with no steering wheel. But outside of that, it never really got any publicity. I looked for articles on it to try and find out more and more information to share with you all, but there really isn't much out there on this car. Really all I know is that from what I read, of course you had your joystick which from pictures was situated kind of down near where the shifter would be and it basically you would keep your hand down here and when you wanted to go left you'd push it to the left when you didn't go right you went to the right. Functioned just like a normal joystick. It wasn't anything different than how you would navigate a plane. Of course Saab known for their airplanes and military presence. So the joystick function just as any other joystick in a fighter plane, which sounds kind of odd to say, but uh, in essence, I mean, from what I read, it was very hard to steer because when you have your normal steering wheel, of course, you barely even have to touch it to change a lane while you're cruising at 40 or even highway speeds. You barely even have to touch it. But you think with a joystick, because there's so much I mean, with a normal steering wheel, you can turn it, you know, about one and a half times at least before it locks. And with a joystick, you can kind of just do a little bit with it, and that's about the extent of what you get. So it's pretty much every little movement when you would move that joystick would just be magnified. So even just touching it just the slightest bit would make the car turn pretty 
pretty easily. One of the other points brought up in one of the articles that I read was that something like this would never work because it would be very tiring to use. And when I thought about that, it makes sense because when you're just, you know, when you're just cruising, you don't have your hands down here by your shifter or whatnot, you're just cruising both hands on the steering wheel, it's, it's comfortable. I mean, you can rest your hands on the steering wheel. You're not like straining your muscles, your arms aren't sore or anything. I mean, but when you've got your hand down here, and from what I read also, the production model was supposed to have a joystick for each hand to help prevent this. How that would exactly work, I have no clue. But essentially, keeping your hand down here for a long amount of time or having your arm at some weird angle from wherever the joystick was exactly positioned, it just got tiring over time. Now you're probably also wondering, how the heck does using a joystick control how the how the wheels move of course with your steering wheel it's fairly straightforward but with the Prometheus Saab actually had electric signals and basically it was all done electronically how these uh, signals would have been sent given how much you move the joystick how much to turn the wheel either left or right it was kind of cool pretty ahead of its time for back then uh, excluding the fact that it was controlled through a joystick and not a steering wheel. Nowadays you'll see electrically controlled steering in a lot of higher end cars, but it is slowly becoming more and more common. So that's the Saab Prometheus, probably one of the stranger prototype cars out there. Something that, quite frankly, probably wouldn't have sold well. I think really the only buying point for someone would have been its weird factor or someone who's a pilot who also likes to drive a car that's like piloting a plane in a way. I don't know. So. Basically my point is, something like this really wouldn't have sold well for Saab, so I don't know exactly what their thinking was. Maybe they just had some extra money in the uh, R&D department and they decided, why not just build something stupid like this? Or they just had a plane crash sitting, they're like, hey, let's take the joystick out of that and stick it in a 9000 over here. So let me know your thoughts down below on the Prometheus. Do you think a joystick controlled car is feasible or is it even possible to daily drive uh, a car that's controlled by a joystick? Quite frankly, I think it would take a lot of getting used to and even then it would still be a little sketchy at times. So with that being said, that's gonna wrap up this video guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. I'll see y'all next time.